Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Guyana's 36.4% GDP growth in the first half of 2022 and a projected yearly growth to 56% is reflective of government's policies and a private sector investment. We attach the strongest level of importance as a government on the achievement of strong and sustainable economic growth. But it's also testimony to the efforts being made by the private sector to continue to invest and to expand, uh, which they have been doing in response to the policy environment that we've created. To honor the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the People's Republic of China and the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, the $50 commemorative coin was unveiled at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And when we look at the projects here in Guyana undertaken by the Chinese government in collaboration with the government of, of Guyana, you can see squarely that they were all centered on improving the lives and the livelihoods of the people of Guyana to the benefit of the people also of, of China. In the health sector, Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony is reiterating the need to be vaccinated as long COVID is affecting many of the persons who would have contracted the virus. We noticed that a lot of persons who have been hospitalized um, after they would have been discharged, if those symptoms persist for more than three months, they're considered to have long COVID. Helping Babies Breathe, a training being conducted by the Ministry of Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO, aims to build the capacity of nurses and other healthcare workers to ultimately reduce neonatal mortality. Dr. Anthony noted that while it refers to the first seven days after birth, the first minute can determine whether a child lives or dies. And therefore, if we pay attention to that, uh, we can actually make a big difference. And so this training that you'll be receiving is to help you to identify those risk factors early and to take actions as quickly as possible so that you can save that child's life. And uh, once we are able to do that and implement this program on scale, uh, we will be saving lots of lives. Two years and a half into the COVID-19 pandemic, less persons are requiring hospitalization and the death toll has reduced significantly. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony noted this can be credited to the efforts of government in making available COVID vaccines. Some 87% of the adult population has taken at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. Well, you have a combination of people who have received vaccines. There might have been a lot of people who got infected as well. So they have some um, immunity because of their past infections. And perhaps when you combine that in the population, they would have you would have a substantial amount of persons who would have some level of immunity against COVID. Taking a look at agriculture, residents of Plaisance, East Coast Amarara, will soon benefit from a shade house, which will allow them to cultivate and reap their own crops. The shade house is an initiative of the Plaisance Seventh-day Adventist Church and aims to relieve the burden of the rising food costs in Guyana. When we talk about agriculture, Many persons try to relate it to just the farmers in the, in the field and the farming communities. But if all the organizations in our country emulate what you are trying to do, then I think Guyana can be food secure. Later in the week, the minister also delivered a quantity of farming equipment and the tools to the church. I have commended the effort of this group and I hope that other groups in the country can follow suit because as you know now, they are ex these are exciting times in the agriculture sector where our agriculture sector is moving and moving apace so that we can have food security and also lead the region in its food security and food agenda program. Farmers in Region 2 are pleased that government has fulfilled its commitment by providing the necessary support to increase agri-production there. This fulfillment came in the form of a new grader, which was commissioned at Anna Regina. Rice farmers can now benefit from improved dam maintenance. The dams are the, one of the most burning issues now. Farmers, that's problem farmers are faced with on the Essequibo coast. 
We recognize that. And over the last two years, we have expended a lot, our large budgetary allocation in Region 2. Over $3 billion we have expended right here on the SQ Coast. And that, showed government, that shows government commitment towards the development of Region 2. Because we recognize the importance of this region. In the infrastructure sector, Guyana took another giant leap in its transformational development with the signing of a massive $11.8 billion contract for the construction of the schooner to Crane Four Lane Highway in Region 3. The road is expected to present a major economic and other opportunities for Guyanese and is the fulfillment of a commitment made by President Dr. Mohamed Irfanali. We have the construction and the operation of the multi-billion dollar, multi-purpose port facility dubbed the Port of Freedom Hoop, which will primarily service Guyana's offshore oil and gas sector and other shipping needs, as just one example. Then you have the Wales Development Plan, which aims to expand Guyana industrialized as well as manufacturing opportunities with a low-cost source of energy. Minister Kroll has reassured the Guyanese that works on phase one of the Eccles to Diamond Highway is moving apace and is on track to be completed before September 16. The minister had made the announcement of its completion for Cricket Carnival a few weeks back. Lot one is expected to be completed uh, ahead of the Cricket Carnival because we also expect an, an influx of um, persons coming in, so you'll expect, in addition to your regular East Bank and West Coast traffic, you will have additional persons who will need to traverse that vicinity for the cricket. 46 families have now taken the first step to move from squatters to legal land owners. The families, who occupy lands on Cameron Dam, Region 3, were allocated lots in Lost in Rust. There is and there will be no need futuristically for anyone to occupy a land or a space for which they do not own. You have a president, a son of your soil, a son of your region, who understands your issues, your concerns. And under President Ali's government, we will work to ensure that we help to make the lives of all of our citizens better. Minister Kroll has assured residents of Wakenham that government will make available house lots on the west coast of Demerara and Region 4 for applicants on the island, as there is no more lots available there. For those here, we are making an offer uh, on the first Friday of next month, that's on October, the first Friday in October, We'll be having what is called a dream realized land allocation exercise. And that will be done at the Lenora track and field. And so we will take cognizant of those of you who have those applications. The team will go through them, they will advise you, so you'll have as much information. And then they'll compile that list and make that formal offer for that date. In education, Guyana has recorded improved the performances in both the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, CSEC, and the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination, CAPE, for 2022. For CAPE, Guyana saw an increase of 93.22% in 2022 from 90.86% in 2021. A similar increase was recorded for CSEC with a 68.5% pass rate in 2022 from 66.36% last year. Before the next four years, 100% of our teachers will be trained or in training. That's a big move to take up and sustain um, high pass rates. All of our teachers will be taught how to teach. So not only will they have strong content, but they'll learn how to deliver that to students. All students in grade six will now receive breakfast as part of the National School Feeding Program which will benefit some 956 students in 29 primary schools in Region 10. The aim of the program is to ensure children in all regions have sufficient nourishment that will promote learning 
and to ease the financial burdens faced by parents. And I want you to note that when we're doing something, is everybody getting it? Everybody is getting it. Yesterday, for the first time, Region 2 got that program. They never saw it before. Today, Region 10 is getting that program, and it will continue. And let me tell you the facets of the program. Every grade 6 child will get breakfast. Why grade 6? Because they're in an exam class. So if we have to start, I think that would be the best place to start. The program will not only benefit the students, but will increase economic activities in the region, since all the meals will be sourced through local caterers. And we hired women. Not that men can't cook, but I prefer to give it to women because we're trying to create employment too, for especially single mothers and so on. We hired women who can cook, and we're paying them a sum every month to prepare the meals as well as a sum for every meal. So we will pay for every meal and they will prepare the meals and bring it. The specialized skills of training school in Herstelling is soon to benefit from certification from the Board of Industrial Training. We are to sign an MOU to collaborate because everything I do with anyone, I want a framework of responsibilities. So that is how I do everything with uh, relationship and collaboration. We have a memorandum of agreement that sets out the principles, that sets out the responsibility of both parties. And that is what we are working up along with the, with the um, church in Erstelling. In an effort to strengthen information and communications technology access across Guyana, 13 persons are now trained in the field. They graduated on Thursday at the Mocha Arcadia Community Center, East Bank Damarara. We need to have a sense of pride and a sense of integrity when we move. And this is why this training is here. Because when you're finished, you can say, I did it. I did it. I have moved a step closer to becoming qualified, to getting a job, to earning an income. In celebration of Amerindian Heritage Month, government also hosted a fitness walk. This fitness walk is in recognition of our first people, the Amerindians. Um, the government has declared one month of celebration to highlight the contributions of the Amerindians, them being part of this nation and their cultural tradition and customs. It's very rich. Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr. launched the Guyana Prize for Literature, which was scrapped by the previous administration. This initiative provides a progressive platform to recognize and promote local literature. First is that it's going to be an annual prize. Before it used to be every two years. Now it's going to be an annual prize. Uh, second, there is a uh, youth category I've added in, and we at the ministry, we've added in. Now, there is one um, qualifying area other than age, which is that it's open only to residents, um, uh, persons who are resident in Guyana, Guyanese who are resident in Guyana. Um, and then the the We've also added in a male and female category for the youth prize too. 14 sponsors have partnered with the government to execute the 16 days of cricket carnival events. From the performance arts area, those young people, they're going to be able to get the biggest platform that they have ever had before. People from all around the country, the region, and the world will be here in Guyana and getting the opportunity to see our talents here. Getting them the name and face recognition that they would have not had otherwise. Minister of Labour Joseph Hamilton is calling on employers across the country to ensure they practice transparency and fairness in labor recruitment, especially with migrants. Obeying the laws of Guyana for employment agencies and companies that you are advising, 
ensuring that equal pay for equal jobs, ensuring that contracts are similar in nature. Those are fundamentals. The PPBC Administration and the Civil Defense Commission visited and assisted families affected by a windstorm in Beirut and Dazel housing scheme on the east coast of Amarara. The visit was conducted immediately after the CDC was able to assess damages done. What we are doing today is after that assessment, we have been able to get building materials uh, for these residents. So today we, we have come here and, uh, to deliver those building material and um, we're going to see how else we can assist. I have uh, been able to see a few persons who would have sustained medical injuries, so we are going to help those persons as well. And, um, you know, it's what the government does, you know, we, we try to respond to people in need. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.